What's up everybody and welcome here in this video in which I'm going to give you one tip, one suggestion, one performance tip so to say about on the Voltaire Clavier Prelude by Bach D minor this time number six which is BWV 851 and we have here a little bit of a different setting now today because it's still holiday the kids are in the house and they're just now on their bedrooms playing something but i have kind of limited recording possibilities but sharing with you my one tip so to say not behind the keys of my clavichord but here on uh, on the computer gives also other possibilities um, as for instance compare my recording to other recordings which is also for me very interesting to do and it ties into my one tip for this prelude which is about accentuation i'll take i suggest we go to the computer i take my headphone because otherwise you will hear the sound of the computer twice so and i share with you first the piece which we're going to discuss is obviously this prelude of Bach. Okay, and you know, this is a kind of, maybe one of, a, one of a kind performance and in a way that the tempo is different and also the clavichord used for this music is surprisingly rare still today. I know if you're watching these videos a lot, you will say, hey, Wim, what are you talking about? The clavichord is a very well accepted instrument, but still today, if you look even type in on YouTube or Tempriti Clavier Clavichord, you will find a lot of harpsichord recordings, which I have nothing against, but it's a kind of disbalance what was used in the German areas in the 18th century, where the clavichord was by far the most used instrument and not, as many still think today, the cheap instrument of the ordinary musician who couldn't afford a harpsichord. The good, excellent clavichords were very rare and very much sought after and actually very expensive as well. It was a kind of elite instrument. We tend to forget that. And it ties in a little bit to my take on the performance, because if you have a clavichord, then you have the capacity and the capability of dynamic differentiation, which once you explore that music of Bach, certainly the partitas, we're going to address that in the next video. I think tomorrow um, talking about which music fits the best the partitas of the world tempi de clavier i give give a long expose on that but if you want once you start looking to that early still early 18th century music um with the capacity that a flute and a verse player has or a violin player or string players in general uh, dynamic making dynamic differentiation which leads directly to the power of accentuation as I was calling this video because that it is then you start seeing other aspects and I played this piece for a long time even in conservatory time when when I still studied the piano um, in Amsterdam and of course then you have a different approach we're going to share some of those recordings as well here in a minute um, the tempo is more generally today faster which leads to a more um, up to an approach where you have these triplets, these 16 triplets, more approached as a figuration around a chord, which is possible. I mean, that's one approach. But if you add to that the power of accentuation, which really it is, then you start seeing all kinds of differentiations that within these <coughs> triplets, you have a kind of melody, you have a kind of counter melody, you have a kind of story. And then the focus shifts from the left hand, which is, of course, the foundation of the piece, to the storytelling right hand. And that's what I'm doing here. So the, listen to the accents. I give a strong accent on every first, and then the, the sound drops rather quickly. <laughs> If we switch to 
assemblytude, which is the program I use for the editing. You can see it even in the uh, in the graphs. You see the trees here, which are the accents. A different sound of YouTube is really compressing hard. And these large trees are for me what's the one of the most powerful things that the clavichord has which is accentuating and in this piece it leads you automatically to, to another kind of take where the piece slows down maybe not as much as I did but that's just a personal moment you know YouTube is kind of laboratory for me um, I try to uh, I like to experiment I like to just drive the course of my instinct my compass so to say and I'm totally not busy with um, comparing the way I'm going to play that piece comparing that to what's kind of mainstream but because there is a mainstream I was kind of surprised to look that to see that and, and just searching some videos now for this video on YouTube um, which is okay I mean there's nothing against that the tradition is a strong thing um, but that's the way I approach these, these pieces on YouTube, even recording them like the partitas for um, vinyl, I actually just follow what I wanted. This just saying between brackets. So these accentuation patterns, that's really important. And you see that here also very strong. Let's listen. <laughs> You hear the constant shift of accentuation. We go back to YouTube, which is, yeah, which makes the clavichord, I mean, for me, stand out for this music. And here, I, I, re I replay that same passage as we had in Samplitude. To listen to the accentuation, the, the increase in volume, so that's really a crescendo. And then the shift of accentuation from the first to the third triplet, which has the counter melody in, 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 in a kind of um, dialogue with the bass. Listen. And also then the sudden drop of um, the sudden drop of dynamics of volume, which makes the contrast so big, a really dramatic moment, I think. It's a bit It starts. So that's my take on that. That's my one, one take on that. I will go now. We'll go now D2 to to compare that with some harpsichord recordings and some piano recordings. And by doing that myself. I can understand more, and that's interesting to me as well, to understand more uh, some reactions that people say, this is too slow. It was one, one person reacting very kind. I mean, you should, if you find something, the, if you shouldn't always clap in your hands. If you find something, please tell me, I'm learning from that. And, and it, it takes things in perspective. I never take that person, I mean, yeah, on Facebook, that's something. Things happened in that historically performed uh, practice group. That was very personal, and I don't like that. But we should be able to talk about our performances, not on a personal level, but just to learn from each other. And if I listen to other recordings, I understand. If you, um, for instance, let's go to use Leonard. We have Koopman, we have Van Asper here. Then we have Sokolov, we have Richter. I thought I had Lane Gold as well. And we have Andrashiv, of course. So if you hear, for instance, a performance like this. I mean, I'm a huge fan of, of Richter. He has played one of some pieces in the most beautiful way. I'm really, there is one of the most amazing pianists 
and this is a very nice recording you still hear the accentuation pattern but in a different way this is of course a much different character this is a piece for me not anymore reflecting the d minor but that's his choice this is a kind of motorical flow where it is joyful and that's if you talk about tonalities and characteristics which of course you can address to a certain tonality it's one step further to address also kind of quality of the thirds to that but that's for another video then this is not a d minor this is just a sunny sunday morning where the family is going out uh, to somewhere but very nice played with accentuation if you go to a harpsichord recording let's take an aspirin Very nice. I, I go through some recordings with Copeland and I give it. And then Leonard. So he uses a kind of stop of the, on, on the harpsichord to make make the sound a little bit shorter. But um, all three struggle with one thing: that's what to do with the right hand, and that's. So I'm not saying that the harpsichord is a not an expressive instrument but it is expressive in another way and i'm i will repeat that perhaps more often in the future that we today tend to throw everything on one pile but clavichord harpsichord whatever it's keyboard music but those two instruments are so different i mean what i'm doing in the in the right hand here It's almost not possible in a harpsichord in that uh, that way. So you have to look for other solutions, and other solutions lead to another performance. Um, again, I'm I'm not saying which performance is the best. I can understand coming from those recordings that this is very slow, and of course you have to adapt to that. But this level of accentuation, why would you like want to miss that? And so it's not the same the piece becomes another piece and that's my point in this the questions i sometimes pose on which instrument did bach use it's important to discover that because he for sure had an instrument in mind and seeing this need for accentuation it's something that i feel much closer to the clavichord which by the way was a totally new instrument at the time if you go to um, Andras Schiff, he plays it very surprisingly, very beautiful. You hear very subtle this this lengthening of notes, which is of course very difficult on a modern grand piano, and and that gives different shading. So I like that very much. To me, the clavichord and the piano are more more close, more um, comparable instruments than the clavichord and the harpsichord. But that's just me. Um, so. And that's also the slowest performance of all, except of course mine. But the character of the D minor, 
I believe as I feel the piece is so much in, in this, this, this is so dramatic. <laughs> Also here the left hand, this D Now It's like standing still. And now the sun goes down. Not it comes. And left hand will take over. Goes down, down, left hand. And the right hand is constantly decreasing. There's a kind of tension now that comes. So the piece becomes suddenly a very, very complicated piece, very different than this. So that's maybe a long one tip video, but I kind of like this format when we go where we go through the piece together. My recording compared maybe to other recordings, it's a, a different way for me also to speak on the piece like this than sitting behind the keys of my clavichord where I have to perform and speak at the same time. We do that during the master classes. So if you like this format, please let me know in the comment section, which section below, and uh, I, we will do it uh, more in the future for music by Costas, which is coming in September of October. That's of course hard because they're all premieres. Um, but for these pieces, I'd love to do that. And maybe we can touch other elements, discover other elements that are Maybe not possible behind the keys of my clavichord. Anyway, if this is your first time here on the channel, I'd love to have you subscribed here. I'm making videos, um, sharing with you, exploring with you the, uh, the beauty of the music from Bach to Beethoven and discovering all kinds of things like we're doing now at the computer or sitting behind the keys of my clavichord, discussing the notation and context of the time of the composers. Compare different style periods to learn from that. And in order to hopefully inspire you as a musician or as a listener, as in case that's the case, love to have you join our community here by hitting the subscription button. And next to that is a bell icon. If you press that as well, you get notifications by YouTube. Also for the live streams, which is a great way to interact with you. So that was it for this video. Again, thanks for watching. Um, give it a thumbs up share this video with your friends it's important for the youtube algorithms and we see each other very soon again bye